The very first game we're going to break down, I figured higher seeded team, we have to break them down first, right? No offense, Sonny, but that's just kind of how it goes. Purdue takes on Gonzaga. This te- These two teams did previously meet, I think, what was it, third or fourth game? I think it was the uh, fourth uh, game It was of the Gonzaga's uh, third. I think it was Purdue's fourth game. Okay. All right. So Purdue's fourth game of the season and Purdue won 73 to 63. I was making jokes that like Purdue has the perfect path to the national championship uh, and actually the entire rest of the tournament. If they face Gonzaga and then Tennessee and then Marquette and then Illinois, it's like, (laughs) we'll just play all the teams that we've already played this season. Uh, But yeah, definitely a good sign for Purdue there. However, I would say that I think this Gonzaga team is a little bit different than who they were at the beginning of the season. They're doing things a little bit differently. I think Mark Few has a little bit better of a handle on this team and is working with them differently. But Frank, I know that you have probably thought about this game every which way possible. So what are your thoughts going into this one? Yeah, I have thought about this game quite a bit. Uh, you are right about that. And I think that it's hard to take a lot away from the first matchup between the two teams because it was a pretty big anomaly in, in a lot of fac- facets, really. Um, you know, Gonzaga w- went six for 32 from three. It um, was actually Purdue's worst shooting night of the season. They were only 24%. Uh, Purdue didn't rebound the ball very well. Both teams turned the ball over quite a bit. Um, so, I mean, it, it was really an anomaly on both sides. So I don't know how much to to take away from this game, you know, in terms of thinking about the the first matchup. But... Um, you know, Gonzaga, I think the biggest thing, the biggest advantage that Purdue has in this game is Purdue's depth because Gonzaga is really kind of limited now to a seven man rotation. Um, and I think that, you know, Purdue rotating fewer guys, um, you know, in the NCAA tournament, but as many as 10 we've seen throughout the season could be where Purdue has a big advantage in this game. Um, but ultimately, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm terrified. I, I respect the heck out of Mark Fio. I respect the heck out of Gonzaga. Um, Ken Palm predicts a four point win and I don't, th- I can see that going four points Purdue, four points Gonzaga, but ultimately I do expect it to be a close game and I expect it to be a grinder. And again, I think, but bo- I think both teams are different, honestly, than, than what we saw back in November, but, uh, I'm super excited and nervous somehow at the same time. But, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a close game and I, um, uh, I'm pulling for a bully maker win. Now, Frank, let me ask you this before we go to Sonny. Both teams, as I've watched them recently, have seemed to slow their pace down even more than usual. Purdue, obviously, is not the fastest team in the nation. However, they have slowed down more. And Gonzaga, I mean, most of the year, they they seem to be pretty quick. Not the quickest, but pretty quick. And they've just slowed down completely. And I don't know if that's because of depth or what Mark Few is thinking there. However, do you think that there's a possibility that Purdue might try to get out and run a little bit more in this one and try to speed up the pace of a Gonzaga team that doesn't have the depth that Purdue has? Or what do you think will happen in those terms? Yeah, I'll kind of I'll kind of answer that with a, with a Matt Painter quote. Uh, he said, Purdue doesn't get enough credit for playing in transition and Gonzaga doesn't get enough credit for playing in the half court. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think you're right. I think throughout the season, they look to get out and transition a little bit more. Purdue, I think, typically looks that way. Uh, you know, in, in the fast break, they they try to look to score if it's there. Uh, but if it's not, they they slow it down. And, and you know, Purdue doesn't necessarily have a ton of personnel who are built to do that. They, you know, Lance Jones is uh, Miles Golden, Cam Heidi can, but not everybody can. Um, but I think that, you know, Mark Few is a very opportunistic coach um, and that if he sees the opportunities there, they're definitely going to look to to take it. But I think, you know, part of it is that, you know, when you're playing in the, in the tournament, you're playing in conference uh, tournaments that, you're, you know, teams are going to bring their best and teams have scattered you quite a bit. Um, I just think that both teams are going to look to be as opportunistic as they as they can. But, um, yeah, I, I, I hope they don't. Uh, I hope they I hope Purdue can keep them in front of them and, you know, make it a half court game because defensively, I feel like Purdue's been playing pretty well the last three or four games. So. Uh, I like Purdue's chances more in the half court than I do in transition. Yeah, no, Purdue's been fantastic in the last uh, few games, and Gonzaga has as well. I look it up Barton Torvik's numbers. Purdue has been, ever since the NCAA tournament started, Purdue has been the fifth best team in the tournament, and Gonzaga has been six. So both of these teams are playing really well right now. It's hard to argue that either one has much of an advantage on the other one. I mean, even this season, Purdue has scored 83.9 points per game, and Gonzaga has scored exactly the same, 83.9 points per game. 
game. So very interesting matchup. I don't think it'll be like Utah State or Grambling State at all. And uh, I am nervous here for the Boilermakers. But as always, I look at Zach Eady and say, you have Zach Eady. Uh, <laughs> I, when you have the best player on the court, there's less to be nervous about in that situation. But Sonny, going to you in this one. Obviously, you've watched more Illini basketball, but you do watch Purdue as well. Best team in the Big Ten, and they won the Big Ten this year. And uh, I don't know how much you've watched Gonzaga. However, what are your thoughts going into this game? I try to keep up with all the other teams that are kind of going on in the tournament. Um, I, I, I've i called Purdue winning the national championship about a month, month and a half ago. And I think this kind of fits in with the storyline. Um, I've said Matt Painter is a top three coach in the country since the season started. You know, I, I, I think he's an amazing coach. Today, he or sorry, on Friday night, he just happens to go up against a coach who might be top two, if not top one. So I, it's a matchup I'm really – I do have Purdue winning pretty handedly. But if there's one guy who I think can kind of uh, – what's the word? Maybe confuse Matt Painter a little bit or require Matt Painter to make adjustments mid-game, it's Mark Few. Uh, you know, Mark Few, he's got a reputation where he's kind of like – uh, you know, if, if he finds something that's working, he's going to keep doing it until you figure it out. And so all of a sudden, if uh, Gonzaga gets off to a pretty hot start, the pressure is going to be on Matt Painter to try to make an adjustment and try to counteract that. Now, granted, we know Zach Eady is the cheat code. He's going to get his 27 and 14 and whatever it may be. But if for whatever reason, you know, the Gonzaga, Gonzaga shots are falling and the Purdue shooters shots aren't, then the game could get pretty close. But uh, again, I, I think uh, Purdue wins pretty handedly on Friday night. Now, one piece of this that I am really interested in, Sonny, is that Gonzaga has one of the lowest free throw rates in the nation. I mean, like over the last five games, it's 26%, according to CBB Analytics. That is super, super low. Um, Purdue, on the season, their free throw rate is 42.4%. I mean, we're talking like a, you know, a 16 point math in my head, 16 point difference there, uh, between the two teams. I mean, I, I, when I look at these teams and I say Zach Eady doesn't foul much, he doesn't foul hardly at all. And I don't think that Gonzaga has anybody down low that's going to be able to give him consistent, uh, issues to where Gonzaga is not going to be fouling and they're going to be, uh, you know, preventing that from happening with Purdue. And so in this situation, I don't know if Gonzaga is going to be able to overcome Purdue shooting as many free throws as they probably are going to be able to shoot. I mean, I, I would think at least 20 in this game and Gonzaga could shoot as few as 10 or 12, probably more than that, but that's probably as few as they could shoot in this one. So, I mean, I know we love to talk about the refs and yada, 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 whatever. And I'm sure that'll come up in this game. Like it does with every Purdue game. And, you know, I just kind of leave that alone nowadays because it's, not even relevant conversation in my mind, but are you concerned about the free throw rate of these two teams, Sonny at all? I mean, it, it's a concern for sure, because again, you know, as you kind of reference Edie, the only way to really, in my opinion, beat a Purdue team is to try to bring Edie away from the paint, at least as often as you can. And if Edie's not down low, then he's not fouling. And so that means that Edie's going to be playing 33, 35, 37 minutes and if Edie's playing 37 minutes, he's going to post up monster numbers. And so, I mean, you know, again, the foul discrepancy, it, it, it happens, but it's kind of been the story of the season. You know, as Purdue fans will tell you, you know, that their offense is kind of almost designed that way, similar to what Illinois does with Terrence Shannon. You know, it's the idea is to catch the defense off guard in transition and rack up fouls, which I'm sure we're going to talk about uh, in our next preview. So, it's in Purdue's strategy to get uh, those fouls on Gonzaga. And I can see, you know, that being the narrative, but not being the reason that, you know, one team uh, wins or loses. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Frank, going to you with this one. Uh, definitely in this game, Gonzaga does not. They, they don't turn the ball over hardly at all. And one of Purdue's weaknesses this year, I don't know if you want to call it a weakness or not, but it's something that they've been deficient in. And I think they're okay with being deficient in it because they don't seem to require it as much as other teams do, but they don't get a ton of steals against the other team. And so when you combine a low steal rate for 
uh, Purdue and then a very low turnover rate for Gonzaga, you could he- see a situation very quickly where Gonzaga has maybe two, maybe three turnovers in this game. And that's also a point for them in this one where you're looking at it and saying, well, if Gonzaga just doesn't turn the ball over, they're going to maximize their opportunities and Purdue could be in trouble if they do start turning the ball over, which seems to be the way that you kind of beat Purdue in my mind, it, you know, whether it's Edie or Smith or somebody like that, you get them to start turning the ball over because that's basically your only chance to not get dunked on by Zach Eady. But, uh, Frank, in terms of the uh, the low steal rate for Purdue and the uh, low turnover rate for Gonzaga, does that worry you at all? Um, it, it, it really doesn't. Um, and the reason why, I mean, so Purdue's never been, you know, a team that's going to turn you over quite a bit. They're ranked 340th in, in turnover forcing. So the percentage of opponent possessions that results in a turnover. So not very high. And we've seen Purdue play these types of games before where, uh, the, you know, they still win the game, but the opponent, you know, it only turns it over four or five times. And uh, but I, I think you hit the nail on the head and that, you know, if the script were to flip, for example, if Purdue starts to turn the ball over, that's where things can get really dangerous. So as long as Purdue can keep their turnover percentage, you know, sub 15, I, I feel really good. Um, and to touch on the free throw disparity or the, the you know, foul disparity for a second you know, in this first game. And again, I'm not taking a ton away from that because both teams are much different now. Uh, Gonzaga did guard Zach Eady one-on-one, or they tried to at least for the majority of the first half. Um, I'll be really curious to see how, how they look to do that, especially with the, you know, the limited personnel they have on um, that kind of seven man rotation. So, um, that'll definitely be something to watch as well. I, I, uh, I'm not trying not to sound like too much of a Homer, but not a ton of people have had success guarding Zach Eady one-on-one, especially this season and, and last season. So, that's that's also going to be a big story, and I think that'll kind of lend itself to the the free throw story that goes along with this game. But um, really, no, I'm 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 not concerned about the the, the steal uh, disparity and turnover disparity there. If um, you know if Purdue can be opportunistic and look to steal, Purdue's not very aggressive on defense. Um, they just they play a little bit conservatively. They don't they don't get aggressive. They don't contest a ton of shots too too intensely. So I'm 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 not concerned about it, but just because it's it's nothing new is the ultimate takeaway there. Yeah, yeah, I can totally see that. Uh, Sonny, before we get out of here with this game, let's go ahead and go to you with your prediction for the game. Give me who you think ultimately will win this game. And uh, you mentioned a score and the scoring uh, discrepancy. So what is your score prediction for this game as well? I think there's only one team that doesn't have to play a perfect game uh, to beat Purdue this year. And Gonzaga is not that team. I I'm going to say it's going to actually be a higher scoring game. I'm going to say 91 77 Purdue. Wow. Uh, Frank, your, uh, prediction for who will win and your score prediction. Yeah. Um, this morning I ran 10,000 simulations of this game. Um, Purdue won 78% of them. Uh, the most common score was 82 76 Purdue. So I'm going to go with that. It's pretty spot on with uh with Ken Palm with the 81 to 77 there. So, um, yeah, I went into this thinking I'll pick Purdue. Do I want to pick Gonzaga just to be different? No, because I honestly I can't. I'm kind of with you, Sonny, to where it's like it, Gonzaga has to play a perfect game in order to win this one. I can see a way that Gonzaga wins, but it's much more difficult for them to win in my mind. And if there is a team that can put together a perfect game in the NCAA tournament, it's somebody with a, uh, with one of the best coaches in all of college basketball. So I do think that Purdue will win this one because I don't think Matt Painter is a slouch. And I think that Matt Painter is at the very least one of the top five coaches in college basketball, if not top three, uh, before, like, like mentioned before, but I will go, ahead and say that I actually intend it'll be a little bit of a lower scoring game with the pace being low in this one I'm gonna go uh, with 75 to 69 in this one I just think both of these teams are going to be content with slowing it down and uh, you'll see some free throws and things like that maybe one of them will struggle with it but at the end of the day I think it'll uh, I think it'll slow down and we'll get a lower scoring game 